All right, thank you for joining us today. Um, today's speakers will be uh, Randy Berry, Senior Vice President, Operations and Services, uh, myself, Chris Lambing, Vice President of Inspection Services, and Colin Moran, Manager of Inspection Services and Key Accounts out of Europe. Um, so let's get, let's get started. Um, so Iron Planet's Inspection Services, that's what we're here to talk about today and, and obviously it's something that we are very proud of here at Iron Planet. Um, it's, it's what drives our, our marketplaces, right? I mean, the, the uh, confidence that we instill through uh, the inspections done by our inspectors and uh, our processes and the technology that we have uh, is what stands out um, at Iron Planet. So, you know, we, we create and maintain a trusted marketplace for our buyers and sellers. Um, and again, that's that's all about building that confidence, you know, that unbiased report uh, that, that both brings buyers and sellers together uh, in a trusted marketplace. Uh, we adapt to an ever-changing equipment market, uh, you know, and we are, again, as you see through the years of all the different inspections we've done and, and all the changes, uh, we've gotten into many different uh, verticals in, in the industry and, and inspected a wide range of equipment, uh, which we'll get into later, but, you know, that we feel uh, confident in the expertise of our people who are doing those, those inspections. Uh, and again, we drive technology integration across the industry. Uh, we'll get into that later too, but it's a big, uh, a big factor of what has allowed us to enhance our reports and give the detail uh, that you have come to expect. And, you know, we're all about establishing an environment of continuous improvement and learning, and that goes across uh, all of our lines. Again, uh, you, you'll hear a recurring theme of the people, process, and technology. We're continuing to strive to improve um, all of those. So with that, let me, let me jump into a little history of where we, where we were, and, and then we'll get to where we are today. But... You can see here, this is a photo from the very first item sold on Iron Planet in 2000, right? It's, it's not the, the greatest quality there, as you can see. Um, this is actually a corner shot, which those who are familiar with the Iron Planet marketplace know that that's not what our corner shots look like today. Uh, but, but in 2000, that was a corner shot of ours. And it was one of, of only 16 photographs um, for that inspection report. So over time, right, from 2000 to 2016, our inspections have increased 50-fold in volume, uh, all the way up to 100,000 plus last year. And, and the um, product that we have delivered has obviously enhanced over that time too. So with that, let me jump into, um, you know, wh what a successful and scalable inspection capability requires. And that's, you know, people, process, and technology. And the most important one of those is our people. Um, you know, our inspectors, again, they're, they're, they're a huge part. Uh, you know, they're, they're, the, they're the cog that, that really makes the wheel turn, you know, keeps things going. Um, and they have you know, an average of 20 years of experience in the industry. Um, they go through a lot of training. That, that's the initial training of, of the assessment and, and coming on board as a contractor or as a full-time Iron Planet inspector. Um, then there's online training and orientation, uh, field training, and then there's a monitoring stage in the field uh, to where you finally have the final approval and, and you become uh, a member of the Iron Planet inspection team. And, and it doesn't stop there, right? So, so we have continuous education. Um, and again, as you can see with the average years of experience, our uh, regional field managers, uh, you know, are continuously training uh, all the inspectors in their region. And one tool that we use is this Iron Planet University, which you see screenshots of here. 
Um, it provides online access to everybody in our inspection network, so they can take continued education. Uh, you know, they can go into specific courses that that maybe they need. Um, you know, some some ongoing education on on specific equipment types, be it cranes or be it certain components of of equipment. We can uh, parse out the the uh, training that is needed for each individual and, and, and supply that to them. So our global inspector network, again, all about our people. Um, there's 350 plus inspectors in the Americas region, 40 plus inspectors in the European region, and four, over four inspectors in the Asia Pacific region. And again, you, you combine the cumulative efforts of that group of inspectors for over 100,000 inspections carried out in 2016. And since the beginning of Iron Planet, uh, inspections have been performed in over 100 countries across the world, as you can see there, from India to Canada, from France to Indonesia. And, and of this inspector network, we, we have focused expertise, so we are very Again, very uh, proud of, of our inspectors and of their knowledge. And we have inspectors who have very specific knowledge to certain industries. Um, again, here in this, this slide, you can see that the various types of equipment um, and the various marketplaces that we have focused expertise in. So Cruise Energy, Go Planet, Truck Planet, and specifically to highlight Truck Planet, um, you know, we, Iron Planet acquired Asset Appraisal Services in February of 2013. Before that, we were we were inspecting and selling uh, mini trucks. A, a large amount of, of trucks uh, were sold through our marketplaces, but we recognized we weren't we weren't necessarily the the leader uh, when it came to truck inspections. You know, we weren't we weren't shy about that, and so. With the, the acquisition of asset appraisal services, we now have a, 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 uh, a focused expertise in trucks, and they're the recognized leader in commercial truck inspections in North America, and, and again, has just further um, expanded our level of expertise and our knowledge base uh, in the inspection world. So next, let me move into uh, an overview of our process. Um, this is, you know, our inspections from consignment to sale. So when a seller <coughs> consigns a piece of equipment or a group of, of items, right, for, for auction, uh, that, that really kicks the process off um, to, <coughs> which, to which we, we um, will generate an inspection request. And, and with that inspection request, um, you can see, you know, we will send out whether that's in the United States, whether that's in Europe, whether that's in Australia, Indonesia, wherever it is, um, we will mobilize uh, one inspector or a team of inspectors, depending on the size of, of the inspection request, uh, and we will go out and, and perform that inspection. And again, here here in a little bit, you'll see the inner workings of how that happens and, and how it's fed back to uh, our website for final review. Um, and then you see there's so many different processes that 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 go on between point of consignment and point of sale. Uh, we're going to focus on the inspection side of it, but uh, in that timeline, from time of, of inspection request to to having it available on preview, is 10 business days. Now again, that that may be shorter in some scenarios or longer, uh, depending on the inspection requirement um, and, and certain details that may impact. Uh, that request. And with that, let me let me pass this over to Colm to to go into a deeper dive of the inspection process.
So okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Chris. You know, so here at Iron Planet, we're using somewhere in the region about 267 different types of unique checklists um, for our inspectors to complete their assignments. Um, this number, of course, has grown in line with the demand that's been created through the growth in the business that Chris touched on earlier. You know, I think basically at inception there was a minimal number of checklists, and, and many of those checklists were been used um, to do multiple types of, uh, of equipment. You know, our checklists, of course, have developed, um, and they now more or less encompass any conceivable type of equipment that's out there in the in the market today. You know, for example, we even have a checklist at the moment that that we can use to inspect a, a, a dredge barge um, used up in the Yukon for prospecting gold, for example. Um, I mentioned earlier just about you know the checklists that we were using years ago and the vagueness that they created, and when you compare where we have evolved to today. It's easy to see the improvements that have been have been made in recent times, um, such as the inclusion of equipment features, for example, um, which add value to the equipment, of course, by identifying the additional options. Um, but the the more focused information that you see um, on the reports today, of course, is, is compiled by us using approximately a hundred different line items um, that that's found on each checklist, and again presented back to you guys on uh, on the website. And the value that these line items bring to us is probably about twofold. You know, the first one, I guess, they're showing the level of detail uh, in which our inspectors are going to during the inspection. Essentially, that means that he's touching the equipment in at least 100 different times um, for every full inspection report that he completes. Um, each of uh, each of these uh, line items are supported by an appropriate photograph wherever wherever necessary. The second value add that the, the volume of touch points bring to our reports is the improved simplicity that it offers to uh, the potential buyers to pinpoint the relevant information during the uh, review of the report um, to help you make that buying decision. Well, of course, it's it's great that we have such an offering today, having come from where we started. Um, we do not rest on our laurels either. Um, so each and, and every single checklist uh, that we use is under a constant uh, state of review um, by our team back in uh, the Fort Worth office over in Texas. You know, these improvements are, are, are made on the back of the new additions that you see in machine specifications from, from each and every OEM, um, or for example, changes in the engine technology that, that we're seeing every day to meet the new environmental tiers and, and so forth. You know, we, we're also gathering this different type of information to improve the reports from you know, our large inspection team across the world. And that also helps us to adapt the checklists um, to include some maybe region-specific information where, wherever possible. Take, for example, at the moment we're, we're seeing quite a lot of uh, the newer Tier 4 type engines coming through the uh, marketplace. So we've adapted the report to include the new feature on these engines, which again in the US is called DEF. Over here in Europe we call it AdBlue. Um, so again, it makes it a little bit simpler for the buyers to uh, review the reports online and understand what they're looking at. Making these changes, of course, keep us abreast of the advances that's in the industry and the beauty of the technology prowess that Chris will get into in a little bit more detail shortly is that once that update is actually done in Fort Worth, it's instantaneously available to the inspection team regardless of where they're operating across the world. So to move on briefly then into um, the anatomy of the actual field inspection. Which, uh, is, which happens with the inspectors on site. So the Iron Planet inspector is tasked with some pretty important roles uh, within, the, uh, within the company. Firstly, I guess he's, the, he's going to be the eyes and the ears, of course, of the buyer, um, whilst on the other side, he's there to accentuate the positives that you're seeing, um, which supports the preparation that was done by the seller in advance of the inspection which again brings us back into the unbiased uh, nature of our reports. The inspector's main role obviously is, is then to inspect the equipment and once assigned to a package uh, of equipment, he's expected to complete it in a, in a timely manner, again to help us maintain that 10 day turn that, that Chris mentioned earlier. Of course the first step of any assignment is to, to make contact with the assigned point of contact. Um, and discuss the equipment readiness. Um, we class this as a vital area in the lead up to the inspection. Um, and then he, he'll, he'll arrange the date and time to get on site. Once he makes it to the site and he gets himself introduced with the points of contact, 
They then locate the equipment around the yard using the accurate serial numbers that's provided or in some cases the fleet number if that's necessary. Uh, we give each and every item uh, a unique tracking number label. Um, this number is used internally, I guess, throughout the system um, to track the machines as we take them from each different step in the um, in the process. And also, it, it, it adds some value in the, in the post sale element of our of our business in that it's easily identifying the machine for uh, for collection. The inspector will then take a walk around, uh, do a check for fluid levels, and then he start his inspection. So as I mentioned, um, the inspector is he's mainly guided by the checklist that we discussed um, on the slide beforehand, and each and every line item that's within that particular checklist. You know, these, these touch points, as we call them, sometimes are broken out into approximately eight individual sections, um, which encompass each and every subsystem or component, such as you know control station, general appearance, engine, chassis, etc. And as, although we do include a vast number of areas for, for the inspector to check. Um, we also leverage on the experience that Chris touched on um, that these guys have acquired throughout their years in the industry. And they're expected also to identify and evaluate some systems, of course, that, that are critical to the machine performance, but may not just be mentioned on the, uh, on the checklist. And we would also expect the inspector to uh, take a similar approach to areas which will, will detract from the machine appearance or, or value, you know, such as in, in inside of a control station, for example. To to complement that depth of of um, the, of, of information, the the inspector is compelled to observe and capture some pictures and, and videos of certain components around um, around each 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 part of the machine. Take as an example, he would be expected to capture a video of his engine blow-by, uh, pictures of emissions labels, air compressors, um, leaks around the engine and fuel, fuel systems, and of course the turbo. And again, once the equipment has then reached an operating temperature, uh, some initial procedures are complete, the inspector will he'll then work to maybe the, the drivetrain components. Um, and critically important is he will identify the type of transmission that's in the machine um, and the gear ranges, of course, if applicable. You know, and information like this is normally supported uh, with the use of a photograph. Um, as we all know, a photograph will, will tell a thousand words. You know, take as an example uh, Caterpillar Dozer. You know, we, we'll indicate on such a machine, is it a hydrostatic transmission or is it a power shift transmission with a differential steering? And then, dependent on the type of transmission, we'll report on the uh, the condition of the the components within it. So, take as an example your torque converters or steering clutches, for wherever wherever is necessary and appropriate. The inspector then moves through different sections and into the likes of the chassis, for for example, and, and the undercarriage with um, you know track type equipment. Um, He'll report on the condition of the booms and sticks. He'll provide some critical information again, such as uh, you know stick length as an example, which again allows the buyer to make a make a good decision um, and understand if the equipment will suit the application in uh, in which he's looking to fill. Uh, he'll also highlight some areas of pivot point wear, uh, areas of cracks or weld repair, all again which uh, detract from the value of, of a machine. Of course, on the track type equipment, um, the undercarriage, as we all know, is a very, very important piece of um, piece of the machine. And our inspector, of course, knows this. And to provide the information, he he takes multiple photographs um, of the relevant components, you know, such as track pads, links, your bushings and sprockets, etc. Um, and again, similar to a transmission component, here we'll we'll identify some value added. Added um, components such as you know Caterpillar System One, for example, or if the if the undercarriage has roller bushings, which you sometimes find on some case equipment, you know. And again, once all of these different areas have been addressed through from start to finish on our checklist, the inspector, the inspector then proceeds to take some uh, some fluid samples. You see in the pictures on on the slide. Put that aside then after his engine tran hydraulic and transmission fluid samples are done, he'll thoroughly review the information he has inputted into the um, into his report. And by using the again, touching on technology, the iPad application that we've developed, um, it allows him to submit the report instantaneously um, and allow our quality controllers back in the Fort Worth office or Atlanta or here in Dublin for Europe um, 
and these guys take over with the controlling process to make sure the information is accurate going up on the website. And of course, I'll hand it back to Chris here on this point, and he can take you through the next uh, the next few steps of the process. All right, thank you, Colin. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to dive into the technology, um, but before I do, I think you've you've heard about our our, our people again. I just want to reiterate. I mean, how, how how proud we are of of that segment of uh, inspection services, right? I mean, that, that really is what drives uh, the product that, that we that we put out every day. Um, and, and just you know, it's kind of funny looking at those pictures that Comb just just walked through. Um, that's not an act or anything. That that's that's one of our uh, regional field managers. I was actually just with him uh, in Orlando uh, a few weeks ago. And, and as we get into technology, you'll see. I mean. These inspectors who have this equipment knowledge, um, you know, they're able to to, to conquer, uh, you know, even more by the technology that that we have brought in, um, and, and they're they're out there, who, who, you know, testing it and, and developing it so that it really is, you know, technology brings the people and the process together, uh, and that's really what what our technology is driven towards um, internally, and then also to connect. Uh, the world to to our inspection report. So, uh, you know, this is a pretty exciting exciting topic for us. Um, and and one one other piece of, of this inspection process, as you see in the first bullet, there is, is our our quality control team. So, you know, what we refer to as our controllers. Um, you know, you can think of it as uh, you know reading a or getting a copy of a book that that sold a million copies, and 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 you're you're jumping into you know the first chapter, and, and you're excited, and, and only to read the first sentence, and, and it makes no sense because somebody misprinted the word, right? And, and you're just kind of left, you know, scratching your head, going, "Well, you know, what is that?" Well, that's what you know. Our controller team is 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 tasked with, you know, preparing that inspection uh, for final presentation, and, and they have, you know, a wealth of equipment knowledge too. This isn't just, um, you know. Someone looking, you know, and doing a spell check, uh, you know, but but they're 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 taking what the inspector has submitted and making sure that uh, it is presented in a manner that is is clear to to the world. Again, so um, now with that, I was actually, you know, we're just it, it's funny to to kind of look back to the past, right? W where were we, um, and then what what has has changed with our technology? So um, let me kind of give you. A brief overview of that. I mean, we were we were not always, as you saw in the picture from 2000, we weren't at the point we are today back then, right? So there was a point where uh, the inspector in the field would, would would take pictures via a disposable camera, and and that along with with a paper checklist would would be mailed, um, or sometimes the, the checklist may be faxed, but mailed to the office where they would go and and get the photos developed. Um, and, and download those off off the uh, store's website and then put them into the report. Uh, you know, we got really high tech when we went to floppy disks um, and then moved on to burning photos onto CDs. Uh, and then finally, you know, we got to the point where we are today. But there's a lot that goes on with, with preparing that report, right? And um, previously, there was a whole lot of manual input. So an inspector performs the inspection, goes through all that detail that Colin just mentioned, submits that to the office, and then someone has to take and look through, you know, 25 pages of paper and enter all of that data, uh, and then take the photos and assign them to to the different categories that Colin mentioned, and and go into the line items. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of potential for for human error, right? I mean. Um, even if you have the best processes and the best technology, I mean, there's opportunity for human error. And so what um, kind of the progression of our technology has done is limited some of that, limited the, the, the redundancies and, um, and a lot of the manual input and allowed it to flow straight from the inspector to a format that, that is almost ready for, for final presentation, right, and allowed our teams to focus on the important Part of their role, right, of actually doing the review and, and spending time um, really quality controlling versus doing some data entry. So, with that said, that progression went to you know we rolled out a, a motion tablet which had a a web-based app um, and, and it was 
uh, rather expensive per tablet, and, and it wasn't our whole inspector network, um, but, but several of our staff inspectors had those, and that cut down some of the time, but there was still a lot of manual photo assigning that, that had to be done. Um, and then uh, about four years ago, three, three and a half years ago, uh, we developed our eye inspector app, which is on iOS. Uh, both Randy, who, who's on this call, and, and Connor Humphrey um, were, were very keen on, on, on getting that developed so that, again, we could further expand the detail that we would wanted to provide, right? You can imagine trying to capture all that and manually uh, load it. You just you, you reach a point where you can't expand on all of that data, and you can't expand on the precise photos that we want to take for each category because of all of the manual repetitive steps, um, and we were we were missing out on that. So so this eye inspector app um, takes the the report from the field, and it and it sends it to where when it hits our website. So when inspector's done inspecting a unit, it, it looks like these pictures you see here, right? So uh, all of the content and, and these don't show our star ratings, but star ratings also come through. Um, all the contents there where you see the little camera icon on the, the picture that's highlighted or has a red box around it, those are line item photos that uh, the inspector actually took on that section inside of the app. And so when he submits it, it's already attached there. Um, and then any additional photos for the general appearance section or the safety section or the chassis section, they're dropped down uh, where, where a, a buyer can, can click on uh, the additional photos and see them for that section or they can look at the photos at large. So again, technology has really uh, improved our processes and it's given us the ability to give more detail uh, to the buyer, right? right? And, and, and provide more detail uh, of the seller's equipment. So that way we can further expand our, our unbiased inspection and really give a high, high level of quality. Uh, with that said, um, also let me, before I move on, video functionality. So we, we've rolled out video to our reports. Uh, it's another way that, you know, we know what our guys go through every day, but if you're just seeing a comment as a, as a seller or as a buyer, you may be going, well, okay, is that really how it is? I, I want to hear it. I, I want to see it, right? And that's what we are about, and we're, we're using technology to do that, right? To to give the the uh, the marketplace more of a real look at that equipment, right? That they're actually there in it, walking around it without actually being there, right? Um, and with that said, you know, think of where where we can go next. You know, that's that's where we're we're always thinking ahead. Um, you know, I love, uh, <clears throat> I have young kids, and, and, and as they, you know, kind of tell me about new technology that, that you know, and I, I'm, not, I'm not old, I don't consider myself old, but yet they're already talking about things that I'm going, well, what, what, what exactly is that? Well, that's, you know, that's kind of where, where, where we are forward thinking going, you know what, there will be a, this, this picture may, you know, make some, some people chuckle here on, on the far right, but virtual reality you know, that's a reality that, that, that in several years that may be uh, widespread in this industry, right? And, um, you know, we're prepared to continue to improve our technology uh, and, and to really use it to, to extend the, the level of detail and the confidence uh, in our inspection reports. So, uh, you know, again, here, here's uh, just a walk through really our day to day. You know, and to give you, a, you know, the breadth of what's going on, um, you know, we are, we've got 388 iPads that are deployed across the country, uh, I mean, across the world. Uh, we have inspectors in over 24 countries. And then you can see here on the right, 12,000 photos uploaded daily. Uh, you know, a little stat there, if played side by side, they would reach the top of the world's tallest skyscraper and back down again, you know, which is over 4 million. Uh, images of machines uploaded by our inspectors in one year. That's, that's crazy, and technology has helped um, us accomplish that. Uh, and again, this is just, this is daily going on. And on top of the daily business, right, that, that we may be inspecting a unit at a OEM or, or 
you know, off the side of a road at a, at a job site or in somebody's backyard or at a farm. I mean, you name it, our inspectors are there daily performing inspections. And with that, there's some very interesting adventures that, that we have been on that, that really show the limitlessness of uh, our inspection services team. So I'm going to pass it back over to Colm to, to walk through a few of those. Absolutely, Chris. So, of course, uh, as you guys can see in the uh, in the slide up at the moment, you know, we've been to some pretty wild and wonderful places, um, you know, to include gold mines in the Arctic Circle of Sweden, uh, jungles in Central Africa where, you know, the guys have had gorillas looking to use the same hotel rooms as them at times, you know, but a few that stood out to us, I guess, um, you know, looking in the recently enough in, in West Africa, we had uh, a couple of guys down there for a couple, few weeks, um, as you can see in the pictures at the top right, I think they spent a few days trekking through the jungle for a few different uh, kilometers, trying to uh, trying to hunt down some D6s. If you can spot in the far the far top corner of that picture, you'll see one in the distance, you know. And you know, also we had I think back in 2010, uh, especially you guys over here this side of the world will remember the, the the volcano in Iceland, which pretty much shut down European airspace for for a few weeks. You know, but again, that didn't, they didn't stop us from getting the inspector from Iceland where he was the day it actually uh, erupted. Um, but he undertook his own epic journey of trained planes and automobiles to uh, to get home, uh, back through you know flying back through the north of Norway, you know, coach then down to Copenhagen and a train around to uh, to France to get in the tunnel back to the UK where he he was back in a few days to continue with inspections for the next customer. You know. Um, and also down, you know, we had a, we had a big big operation in uh, down in Indonesia, you know, in Borneo, uh, where we flew flew an inspector in, um, and I came, you know, a nice little trip. He internal charter flights up into the middle of the jungle and boat rides up the up up the river for two or three hours and running out of fuel in the in the middle of it and you know living amongst the locals for about three weeks in in, in a mine in the middle of the jungle, you know, and, and not only that, but he had to get back again, you know. So it's it's pretty exciting things that that the guys go through and uh, you know. On, uh, on a regular basis, you know, but I suppose the one constant that we that we see, regardless of where the machine is, be it in the North America, here in Europe, um, or in any of these wonderful places that we've been to, is our ironclad assurance, you know, the, the key differentiator in what we have, you know. And I think I'll pass back over to Randy here for a moment, and, and he'll take you through the main points of what our ironclad assurance is and, and what it offers to you as a buyer or even as a seller. So, Randy, I'll take it over to you. Thank you, Colin. I appreciate that. And uh, I'm going to do just a quick kind of review of what uh, of what Chris and and Colum have shared so far, and then I'll uh, I'll kind of finish up with with Ironclad Assurance, and and then we'll jump into a, a Q and A. We we uh, we see that we already have several questions queued up from uh, from our attendees. You should be able to submit uh, questions through the uh, the chat feature in your uh, in the webinar on your screen there. So. Uh, again, I'm Randy Berry. I've been uh, I'm senior VP of operations and services. I've been with Iron Planet for almost 10 years. Inspection services has been part of my responsibility ever since I've been here. And as Chris highlighted, uh, I've seen just amazing growth uh, and development and improvements in our in our capability uh, to inspect uh, our customers' equipment since I've been here. We're probably doing 15 to 20 times the inspections that uh, were required when I started versus what we're doing now. You saw Chris, he highlighted uh, early on the, the very first item that we sold back in our first, our very first Iron Planet auction, which was in April of 2000. We sold that uh, 1996 CAT 330B excavator for $110,000. Was, it was one of 23 items that we actually sold in that first event. and you know, today you will see uh, anywhere from 800 to 2,000 items selling across the Iron Planet marketplaces every week. Sometimes more than that, but easily you'll see that you'll see that volume. And the 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 improvements and uh, in terms of of making sure that that our inspectors are of the highest quality, they're provided the best possible training. We're leveraging and 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 always improving our processes and we're leveraging technology to the maximum extent possible. All of these improvements, they're not nice to have, they're absolutely must haves for us. We have not we would not have been able to scale this business and scale our inspection capability without these types of uh, forward thinking improvements. And one thing that that many of you probably don't know 
the the unique and forward thinking aspect of the process technology and systems and so forth supporting our inspection services capability and our online marketplace uh, capability were recognized in uh, by, by the US Patent Office actually awarding Iron Planet a patent on our methods and systems back in 2008 supporting this this uh, this overall capability so you know as Chris mentioned at the top we're very very proud of our inspection services capability we think that um, it's truly the the centerpiece of the value proposition that Iron Planet offers our customers both both on the buyer and the seller side and kind of getting back to the to the the uh, the primary element of that it's it's providing these detailed inspections and it's offering those inspections with ironclad assurance which is our commitment that the inspections are accurate and our guarantee that they're accurate and if they are not accurate we will uh, we will stand behind those and we will work with the uh, the buyer to, uh, to to resolve any issues that uh, that may exist so when you think about this you know what are the real benefits for buyers for this capability and this offering well it's the ability to bid confidently you don't have to go spend money and travel and, and consume your time to uh, to visit an item. We're going to be the eyes and ears for you. You're going to be able to bid confidently by looking at that item online, looking at the detail inspection report, looking at all the photos, listening and, and watching the videos of the engine, the blow by and other features of the machine, reviewing the the uh, fluid samples, and you're going to have you're going to be able to bid confidently knowing that what you are looking at and what you see is what you're going to get when you win that item, right? And the ability for us to to drive an online marketplace allows us to provide you, the buyer, access to a much broader selection of equipment on an ongoing basis, a continuous basis, okay? And also, again, you, you can avoid, as I mentioned earlier, you can avoid the time-consuming and costly travel that you may incur in other, uh, in other buying options. Okay, for sellers, how do, how do sellers benefit from this? Well, obviously sellers will benefit from the strong price performance that is is driven by that global buyer base bidding confidently, bidding aggressively, based on the fact that they're comfortable, they know what they're buying, right? And they also, the seller is also benefiting from the low-cost channel, whereby most sellers are going to choose, when they sell through Iron Planet, they're going to choose to sell those items from their own location, which means they can avoid the time-consuming and costly, you know, requirement to move and transport equipment to some physical auction site, right? The other thing is quickest time to cash. All right, we've got we've got auctions and marketplace events every week. You don't have to wait for another provider that may have a, you know, some uh, some event scheduled, you know, on a quarterly or a half year or a yearly basis or whatever. If you're ready to sell, we're ready to sell it on your behalf. Okay. And all of these capabilities that, that uh, Chris and Colm have outlined are the reasons that we can do this. You know, that's the, it, it really, you know, in a nutshell, comprises the value proposition that all Iron Planet offers, uh, offers our customers. So with that little sales pitch at the end here, I want to open it up to, uh, to questions and answers. And we already have some questions queued up, so let me, uh, let me kind of reel through those, and then we'll, uh, we'll open it up for others as well. So... The first question that I see is, is it possible to get a local contact to speak to about inspection and pricing my machines? Where can I find it? Well, go to the Iron Planet website. In the upper left-hand corner, there's a How to Sell link. Click on that. It'll take you to a page, and if you look down the left-hand side, first of all, you'll see a phone number, which takes you into one of our central offices, and you can go that route, or you can also click on uh, on the the uh, the little panel there to determine who your local Iron Planet sales representative is if you don't already know that person and you can identify that person see their local contact info and reach out to them so we appreciate that question and hopefully that uh, that clarifies for you how how you can uh, get uh, uh, get with one of our one of our local people so second question you spoke about oil samples can you explain that a bit more well I think I don't. I don't I think this may have been asked earlier, and I think Colum uh, touched on the oil samples fairly in, in in good detail. But basically, you know, depending on the type of the the equipment that we're inspection inspecting, we're going to pull fluid samples 
you know, either the engine oil, hydraulic uh, fluid, transmission fluid. Again, it, it, you're going to see it varies by equipment type as to whether you get all three or one or two or, 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 or so forth. And you're going to see uh, the analyses reflected of those oil samples. And basically, it's going to show you, you know, wear metals and parts per million, whether or not there's any water or fuel in the, uh, in the fluid and so forth. Uh, and, and that, again, we're all about disclosure, um, and that's, uh, that's something that we find. We get regular feedback from our customers that that's an important part of the, uh, of the inspection. Question number three, do your inspectors make suggestions on how to present your equipment in the best way to sell on our marketplace? Absolutely. Uh, as Chris highlighted, we have a quality control function, and we are constantly, we have a quality control manager. His responsibility is constantly improving the, uh, the content and the presentation of our inspections online, right? And that includes, um, you know, photo quality and angles and, you know, coaching our inspectors on, you know, depending on the weather and the cloudiness versus sunny conditions versus things in the background and so forth, moving, coaching, coaching uh, these guys on how to move machines around. When that's practical, in some cases we have restrictions, we can't move equipment around significantly. But when we can, we try to, we try to always position the machine so that uh, we can get the best possible quality photograph. And our inspectors, we have, certainly our senior inspectors out there have, have many, many years of experience and they're very creative and they understand and appreciate and take ownership of the quality of their photographs and their inspection reports overall. And they're, uh, they're a great source of feedback and, and uh, ideas for us to continue to improve our, our inspection reports. Um, let me see here. The next, do you offer a complete pricing service for assets? Well, again, if you, if you are interested in selling your equipment through Iron Planet, our local rep will work with you to estimate what the market value of that equipment may be. If you have a requirement for what's kind of described as a third-party appraisal, where maybe you're trying to get financing or you have some kind of uh, you know, Department of Transportation bond requirement or you're selling assets or buying assets and you want a more formal appraisal, we also have that uh, paid appraisal service, uh, which you can also work with your local sales rep to, uh, to, get, uh, to, get, to get access to. Um, the next question, how do you handle inspections in areas with bad reception? Are inspections done offline and then uploaded directly to the web? Yes, they are. In fact, our iPads generally work better. Uh, the battery lasts longer when they're not online all the time. So typically our inspectors will be offline and they will conduct their inspections, and then at some point when it's, when it's uh, practical or convenient, they will access Wi-Fi or their, their uh, you know, cell phone network, and they'll upload the reports and the, uh, and the photographs at that time. So, yes, that's, that's a common practice for us. Uh, how much do inspections cost? How are travel costs covered? Have you seen better pricing as inspection reports got more detailed? Um, our fees, again, you can talk to our local reps about the fees, the fees will vary based on the equipment type and based on how much, you know, how many units uh, are actually involved in in a uh, in an assignment. Um, but our fees are very are very reasonable based on the uh, the, the ultimate product that uh, that the customer receives. Uh, hang on, what is the future of the field inspector going forward with Ritchie Brothers? Will they use Iron Planet's network of contract inspectors? Uh, frankly, we can't talk about the Ritchie Brothers uh, deal. You know that that deal is still being, uh, you know, it's it's under. Uh, in basically, we're we're working through the DOJ requirements, so we won't uh, we won't address that question at at this time. But uh, again, you know, we're an online marketplace and. Inspections are a key part of the value proposition, so um, I'd be surprised if, if we didn't leverage our inspections as part of that. What does it cost the seller to have the inspector come out to job site? Again, we talked about that earlier. Talk to your local rep about pricing. Uh, I think that, that covers all the current questions. I don't know um, if our administrative team has, if you see any other questions that we haven't covered. Um, otherwise, 
Yeah, otherwise, again, we we appreciate your patience. I know it took us a few minutes to kind of get this thing launched. We had a little bit of a technical issue to get uh, get this thing started, but we very much appreciate your participation and attendance in this webinar. Um, we'll be uh, announcing very shortly what the next topic is for uh, webinar number three in this series. And again, we appreciate your time and I hope you have a, have a wonderful uh, balance of the day. Thank you.